next we're going to talk about ion channels, specifically ligand gate ion channels. I'm also going to spend a little bit of time talking about mechanically gated and uh, voltage gated channels because they all kind of fall into the same pattern or the same family. The mechanism of act activity is or of action is different. With gated channels, what that simply means, if I could highlight the gate here, when the channel is in its inactive state, the default state is for the shape of the channel to be in such a way that if you look right here at this region here, it prevents any kind of molecule from getting through. In this particular example, I'm using the pink molecules of substances that want to get into the cell. We can say that this is my extracellular fluid right here, and this is my intracellular fluid here. And these pink molecules represent an ion. The identity of the ion is, is not important. It could be sodium, it could be calcium, it could be chloride, it could be um, potassium. Any of these ions are all possible candidates. So the pink dots really are just a generic representation of an ion. And as you know, ions are hydrophilic. They love water. They're dissolved in water. They cannot cross that lipid membrane. If one of these were to try, it, it would fail to get across the phospholipid membrane. So it's only option to get into the cell or out of the cell, because we could reverse this if we wanted to. We could say instead that this is my ICF and this is my ECF. Now that's a little bit contrary to the convention. Normally when we draw these things, we indicate that the upper portion is the ECF, but we could say that this was a channel that was allowing ions out of the cell as opposed to a channel allowing ions into the cell. In their closed state, these channels are impermeable to the ion. The gate that I highlighted in, in yellow will prevent that ion from traveling into the cell or out of the cell. If we look though, and now we're going to say that we have some I, um, ligand that has been released into the extracellular fluid. We're just going to have these triangle ligands. They're floating in the extracellular fluid, and we'll probably have several of them around. Okay, and they have an affinity for this receptor, and they just so happen to be able to bind to this receptor. And so if we get these ligands bound to the receptor, what that's going to do is if you remember the induced fit model, this idea that the ligand changes the conformation of the protein and the protein changes the conformation of the ligand, that alteration will actually open the gate. And you'll notice that now what we have here is a water-filled channel, okay? And because it's a water-filled channel and because those ions, those pink, um, those pink ions will in fact diffuse through along with the water. And so you can see that they dissolve in water. We know that they're hydrophilic. And so as the water moves in through that water-filled channel, we're going to get the movement of these ions into the cell. And this process will continue as long as the ion channel is open. If the ion channel remains open long enough, this process will continue until we reach equilibrium for whatever this pink ion is. Okay, because it's charged, it's not just equilibrium based on concentration gradient, it's also equilibrium based on electrical charge. And we'll revisit that concept. Um, it's essentially an equilibrium due to what's called the electrochemical 
gradient. And so we'll go ahead and call for right now, we're going to call this the electrochemical equilibrium. I'll give you another word for this later on when we start looking at the membranes of neurons. Okay, that's where we're really going to focus on this. The reality though is very rarely does this stay open indefinitely, it doesn't usually stay open long enough for us to reach equilibrium. You'll recall that these ligands have different affinities and they tend to bind and release and bind and release and bind and release. And so when the ligand releases, and let's pretend it's swept away in the blood so it's now no longer concentrated in that area, well then we're simply going to get a reversal of the process and we're going back into this inactive state. We call this the closed state, by the way, and this the open state. And to some degree this is governed by laws of probability. It has to do with the concentration of the ligand Obviously, the more ligand we have present, the probability of these channels being in their open state is much higher. And so we can kind of see this as this is happening. Now, ion channels generate very rapid signals. They're the fastest of all the receptors in terms of generating a response within the cell. And part of the reason is because this ion these ions that enter into the cell, those ions are, in fact, second messengers. And so they come into the cell, or conversely, they could leave the cell. And regardless, what they're actually going to do is uh, generate that response. And they can generate that response based on Let's say, for example, these, this ion is calcium. That calcium might bind to a calcium-sensing protein like troponin, which in skeletal muscle would cause contraction. And so that calcium is that second messenger that activates the troponin. Or alternatively, the calcium can bind to a calcium-sensing molecule such as calmodulin, or so forth. But the other thing these second messengers can do is change the electrical distribution across the cell membrane. And we'll get into that in more detail, but roughly speaking, on a whole, the um, inside of the cell tends to be have a net negative charge. Okay whereas the outside has a net positive. And depending on the identity of these ions, if I'm allowing, let's say, calcium or sodium that is carrying these positive charges into my cell, when I start adding charges to my cell, this net negative number begins to change. For right now, I'm, I like to say that I'm priming the pump, so I don't expect you to understand all the details of these charges yet, but they will become a factor when we get to the neurons, and so I want to set you up for at least a very basic uh, understanding of this idea so that I can layer on top of that basic understanding. Ligand-gated ion channels are definitely receptors, and so sometimes we call these receptor channels. Receptor channels. But they're not the only type of receptor channels we have. We also have receptor channels that I'm going to call mechanically gated. And I talked a little about these in terms of compression or vibration. Um, these particular channels, what happens is they will also exist in a cell membrane. So let's draw my cell membrane here. Okay. 
and will indicate an arrow to represent my change in condition. And I might have a channel that is gated so that I'll just put a little gate here like so, okay? So that it's not going to let ions cross that membrane, okay? If it's in its closed state. But let's say this particular ion channel is a channel in your skin that is designed to recognize touch or pressure. So imagine then if you will, now we're going to press down against this channel with a finger. And when we press down against this channel with a finger, what we actually do, and you can even play with this, if you push into your skin, you're going to notice that you're going to deform the skin, right? And so if we were to look at a cell membrane, that's also going to deform, like so, okay? And in the process of deforming that membrane, that cell membrane, due to mechanical force, the ion channel gate might in fact get kind of moved out of the way. And so suddenly we now have a situation where that gate is now open, okay? And in response to it being open, the ions, whatever those ions happen to be, can now flow into my cell. And so maybe, most often, it's going to be a sodium channel, and now sodium can move into my cell. And again, this has the tendency to move toward electrochemical equilibrium. But again, usually this deformation, this, you know, you're going to touch yourself very briefly. You're not going to necessarily, okay, that sounds kind of bad. You're going to poke your finger into your arm very briefly, but you're not necessarily going to keep it there. But as long as it is there, those channels are open. And so we would say that this is the open state. Okay, and again, what's happening is the laws of probability are such that when the membrane is deformed, there's a higher probability that this ion channel will be open. We have situations with vibration where we have similar events that occur. Um, the membrane structure is changed or altered, and we can look at these mechanically gated channels, and they are still receptors. They're receiving information not from a ligand, but from a physical force that is being generated. Likewise, we can have receptors similar to this that are thermoregulated. And so when the receptor in the closed state is bombarded with heat energy, that'll cause the amino acids that are part of that protein to vibrate and shift a little bit, which would then increase the probability of that channel being open. And we can see this property in many different situations where we have these mechanically gated ion channels. And so I want you to keep that in mind as our receptor channels that they can fall into different categories, okay?